Church, we want to welcome you today to Mombasa Lighthouse Church. My name is Pastor Steve Thuku, and I want you to feel in the house of the Lord at the comfort of your chairs today, wherever you are, whether traveling, whether in your house right now having a cup of coffee. I want to let you know that God is where you are today. I would like to share with you the word of God for the next few minutes that can take us through this week knowing that we have a God whose intention is to see us win battles and conquer everything that is before us today. Turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 14 verse 10 through verse 18. The Bible says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us? To bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? Saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, and I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself of a Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 19. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of, the, of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. I've just reached verse 20. But I would like to let us know that our God is, our, is a God who means well for each and every one of us. There are times things may become so difficult and hard. There are times that things may look as if they are about to finish you in every way, in your business, in your life, in your health. Even as we are facing this calamity that we are facing right now in the world, the calamity of the coronavirus. I want to bring to us this morning a message entitled, A Baptism of the Mindset. When the children of Israel cross the Red Sea, they came to that Red Sea, approaching it with a slave mentality. But we see a different type of people the moment the sea parted and they cross over. This crossing of the Red Sea is otherwise known as the baptism of Moses. We can therefore clearly say they were baptized into a new mindset. Imagine what would have happened if you were in that group of people. Seeing the enemy is coming your way. Having a leader telling you to be still while they are coming. The truth of the matter is you would have shivered and shivered and shivered and died in your fear. But when these people chose to listen to their leader, they saw the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians that were chasing them, they saw them no more after crossing the Red Sea. Church, there is a crossover to be done. And this crossover is a baptism ordained by God. Coronavirus is not as powerful as our God. Every 
rumor that you're hearing left, right, and center in this nation is not as powerful as our God. Countries may shut down, but heaven will remain to be open so that we can cross over. If only we can allow ourselves to hear from our God, His intentions, His goodwill, His love, and all these things that He has planned for us will definitely be revealed to us in due season. When the Jews finally crossed over to the other side, their mindset transformed from a slave mentality to a mentality of we can do it. But that's not all. There was a journey to be covered, a journey that had other enemies along the way. They had just conquered the Red Sea. And then they went with Moses for a while, conquered other small, small kings, as we are going to see in the book of Joshua. But now I want us to jump to Joshua chapter 3 and realize that at this point in time when they crossed over, they also faced another, 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 another challenge. This time around, they were not being chased by anyone. This time around, they were focusing on the promised land. They faced River Jordan in chapter 3. When they entered the promised land, they entered through a river, which is another baptism. They did not just enter, they entered through a river. A river had to part ways and they got another baptism. They got baptized from a slave mentality to a mentality of we can make it. And now they are coming with a mentality we have conquered, we are conquering. But before they could enter Canaan, they had to cross over to the other side with a new mentality. Joshua had to come in and put the priest in place, the Ark of the Covenant in place, and the Levites would just come carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And when they touched the water of the River Jordan, the river itself gave way on its own accord. And they crossed over to the other side. We see God changing the mentality of the children of Israel every moment before they could conquer a new territory. And I want to bring it to us today and say it this way. Until our mindset is changed, we are not going to win this battle. We must be in a position to understand that our God means well for us. That today, even as you're seated in your own sitting room, Today, even as you are listening to me, at the comfort of your car, wherever you are, I want you to know this, that not unless you allow God to baptize you with the new mindset, you will be defeated by fear. You will be defeated by corona. You will be defeated by every type of weapon that the enemy is throwing at you. We have to understand that our God means well for us. We have to embrace everything that is bringing our way. They are here facing Jordan, not being rushed by the enemies. They are taking their sweet time. They have just conquered other kings. In Joshua chapter 2, we read in verse 8 to verse 11. Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to, them, to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us. And that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came from Egypt, out of Egypt. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in, our, in, in, in anyone because of you. The Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. These are the spies of the Israelite army to come and spy the land. And when they entered there, they found a land that has already been conquered mentally. 
They had been defeated in their mind. They had heard of the great things that the God of Israel had done for the children of Israel. And by only hearing, they were defeated. The opposite can be true. If we allow ourselves to be defeated by the rumors, if we allow ourselves to be in a position not to move on and serve the Lord our God simply because all we are hearing is bad news. Church of the living God, we will melt in the wilderness. We will be defeated just like Rahab is saying that their heart fainted. Their heart had no more strength to fight. They were willingly giving their land because their minds were defeated. No wonder God wanted to baptize the children of Israel to have a different mindset before they can take over the promised land. This new baptism would take them into a different way of life. For example, they fought wars in the wilderness or on the other side of the Jordan. They fought wars that they conquered using arrows and all these kind of things. But when they're crossing over, God is preparing them to understand that they conquer through his might, not their strength that the fame of their God has gone before them. If we allow the fame of our God to go before us, there is nothing that is too hard for our God. Once they crossed over to the other side of the Jordan River, wars would be fought differently. Now they would march around a city in silence, as we see in Joshua 6, 1 up to 20. God told them, you, you're going to bring seven priests who will have trumpets, Made, of ram, uh, uh, made from the horns of a ram, and they are going to march towards these walls. Every day they would go around the walls. And this, uh, this will be done for six days, and the seventh day they will do it, or the last day they will do it seven times. And then they will release a shout, by faith, and the walls would come down. God is trying to tell them, listen, it's not what you know, it's who I am. Is not your experience, is who I am. Let me tell you, we may have conquered malaria, we may have conquered uh, uh, all other diseases like Ebola and AIDS. We may be at the verge of bringing all these diseases down. Today we are facing a new type of enemy called Corona. We cannot fight it the same way we fought the other diseases. The enemy knows better than this. He will always approach us through fear. And the moment we are intimidated by the calamities before us, we end up defeating ourselves. Church, we serve a God who is ready any day, any time. Then why should we fear if our God is ready any day, any time? Look at verse 4 of Joshua chapter 6. It says, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams or rams horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets. Now, I will tell you the truth. If I was part and parcel of the team that is getting instructions from their God, I would doubt uh, this strategy. We know very clearly that uh, an army is sent to conquer, but this time around God is saying, send priests. Not the entire bunch of priests, but we, he's talking of seven of them. And their choice of weapon, trumpets. <laughs> what is God trying to do here? Telling them they are supposed to let the priest lead the battle. Choice of weapon, trumpets. And the last day when you're conquering, the next choice of weapon, your shout. Uh-huh. That was not the secret. The secret was in the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolized the presence of the Lord. He wanted them to know that he is with them regardless of what they are facing around them. He is with them regardless of whatever is before them. He is with them. That's why the Ark of the Covenant had to be around as they marched. Isn't it wonderful that God wants us to know that he's Emmanuel, God with us today? If God is for us, 
who can be against us? Is it it wonderful to know that he left it? See, he left all in heaven to just come and be with us so that we can conquer as he conquers through us. Church, we have no room for fear. We have to allow ourselves to be baptized in the baptism of the mindset. These people had every reason to doubt, but they had seen God from the Red Sea to where they are currently. They had seen God. There are three types of baptism that you would have loved to baptize them with or he baptized them with and you would like to see us have the same. The first one, you see, as they follow the priest, the Ark of the Covenant and the choice of weapon granted by, uh, to the priest by God, God wanted them to understand one thing, that on this other side of the Jordan, they were to be baptized into a life of conquering by faith. That is the first baptism. To be baptized into a new lifestyle of faith. They were to conquer by faith. Not by their weapons, not by their experience, not by a good general, but faith. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 to verse 22, we see King Jehoshaphat getting worried and wondering how he's going to conquer the enemies surrounding him. And we catch it up at verse 15, where we hear the Bible saying, and he say, listen all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King, of, uh, King Jehoshaphat. That says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Ooh, oh, how I long to hear this being spoken to our nation today and the world. The same God who spoke to King Jehoshaphat is the same God we serve today. Is the same God who saved you. Is the same God who has come today to encourage you and tell you do not fear. The rumors you're hearing can never be as big as your God. The rumor cannot be as big as your God. He's telling them be still. Do not be afraid. Verse 16 we read, Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Aziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Ooh. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still. The same thing the children of Israel were told. Be still. Don't be in a position to run and be in a position where you are afraid simply because somebody has said this and say that. Be still. Be still. Not only were they required to be still, they were also required to see whew, the salvation of the Lord. They were required to see before it had happened. It says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. Verse 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face on the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and high. And verse 20, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had cons consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercies endureth forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes again, uh, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and the Mount Seir 
who had come against Judah and they were defeated. Now listen to this. Jehoshaphat is just requiring the children of Israel or his people to have faith and belief. Faith in their God and the prophet. All they required is to believe. But before they could believe, he's here telling them, place the priest here. No, don't place, uh, don't place the priest. Place the choir members before anyone else. You thought priests would have sounded like a joke. Here is a battle now being fought using praise and worship team. <laughs> Our God is a God of surprises. Some of these battles can be won through praise. Some of these battles will only be won through worship. We are not talking of just singing. We are talking of worshiping in spirit and in truth. In verse 21 and verse 22, on this side of the Jordan, the second baptism is realized. They were baptized into a life of conquering through trust. They were required to trust God, to trust the prophet, to trust the worship leaders so that they can conquer the enemy before them. And God is saying, if you trust me, you don't need to move a muscle. I will fight on your behalf. I will conquer territories for you. I will defeat diseases for you. If only you can learn to trust. Tell your neighbor, get this baptism of the mindset. If our minds can be transformed and changed, there is nothing that is too hard for our God. And in Judges 7, 7, we see something different. In Judges 7, 7, we read, Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. Here is God talking to Gideon, another warrior, who had gathered around 30,000 warriors. But as days passed on, God would tell him, release that number. Release that number. Give them this test. And finally, he settled on a number of a people that could not seem like they could conquer. 300 people. 300 people. Yes, you heard me. 300 people. He's telling them, or oh, he's telling Josh, uh, uh, Gideon, let go of the entire team you had gathered. These people who are thirsty and hungry and are ready and are lapping like people who want to get the strength. These are the people I'm going to use to win this battle. According to Gideon, a big army conquers larger territories. But according to the new mindset, it's not the army. It's the God of the army. God wanted to let him know, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. He is a God who cannot be controlled by the mind of man. He is a God who cannot be limited by the way we do things. He is a mighty God. And mighty he will remain to be. On this side of the Jordan, they were baptized into a life of obedience. That's the third thing or the third point. On this side of the Jordan, they were baptized into a life of obedience. Three types of baptism. Number one, on this side of the Jordan as they crossed to be baptized, they were baptized into a life of conquering by faith and not by their strength. On this side of the Jordan, number two, they were baptized into a life of conquering through trust. Number three, they were baptized into a life of obedience. Three, these three ingredients, once they are in a believer, nothing is impossible with our God. For the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11 verse 6, whew, but without faith it is impossible to please him. That's why he had to baptize them 
by faith. Church, there is no moment like this moment where everyone is required to have faith in our God. The medics have failed. All the great scientists as we speak are busy scratching their heads because of a simple virus. The world has no solutions as we speak. The greatest army in America cannot kill this virus. All the superpowers of the world, we can mention Britain, we can mention Russia, we can mention America. These people cannot contain this virus. But we have a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ever imagine. All he's requiring us today is to have faith. All he's requiring us to have today is trust. All he's requiring us to have today is obedience. I want to sum it up by reading the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in their wilderness. Our forefathers died before seeing the promised land because they lacked faith, trust, and obedience. And every time they lack this, a calamity will befall them. Would see snakes biting them and killing them. Would see them uh, disobeying and the ground would open and swallow them alive. All these things happened because of refusing to have faith, to trust, and to obey. Church of the living God, there is a promised land that God has promised us today. It's a land that has no sickness or diseases. It's a land where we experience His presence without us wondering when it will ever come to an end. It will be there continuously. God has promised good to us. God has promised us to trample over snakes and scorpions. God has promised us and has given us the power to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, and to do all these things. But I want you to know this. That's a promised land for anyone who believes and trusts and obeys. But please understand this. He will make this promised land possible. However, we have to be willing to pray to pay the price to live there. We have to be willing to pay the price to live there. And that will require a baptism of the mindset. This will require a baptism of a mindset. Church, as one writer stated and said, he will give us his baptism of fire if we will give him something worth burning. If we can lay obedience, trust, and faith before the altar, God will send a new fire within us to conquer new territories, to conquer all those diseases, to conquer all that type of fear that is coming your way. If we are willing to lay it on the altar, if we are willing to bring it in obedience, in trust, and in faith before him, nothing is impossible with God. Father, I thank you for this word. And I thank you. I pray that Jehovah God we are going to see faith arise. We are going to see, oh Jehovah God, the church encouraged again. We are going to see an obedient and a, trust, uh, a trustworthy church. A church full of faith arising again to see what you're about to do, oh God. New things, oh Jehovah God, happening in this land and in this world will require new mindsets. And fathers, we obey to receive it today. We commit ourselves to be faithful, to be
be trustworthy and to be obedient so that we can see you defeat our enemies on our behalf. We thank you. We choose to be still and know that you're God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you and see you next Sunday. Amen.